Hello and welcome to the Bureau for Global Health's Environmental Management Portal orientation video. This portal contains resources and tools to help you with environmental management and compliance according to the agency's legal and policy requirements established in Title 22, Code of Federal Regulations, Part 216, or Reg 216, and USAID's Automated Directive System, or ADS, Section 204. The GH Environmental Management Portal is hosted on the USAID Google platform and is available to anyone with a USAID email account. Outside users, such as support contractors or implementing partners, may request access by sending an email to ghcompliancesupport at usaid.gov. The portal provides information to GH staff regarding the Initial Environmental Examination, or IEE, process, which is described in the GH IEE Bureau Operating Procedure, or BOP. The BOP describes roles, responsibilities, and procedures for coordination among GH staff and others throughout the IEE process. The portal contains various technical resources, including the GH Environmental Screening Tool, which assists project design teams in identifying, evaluating, and mitigating potential environmental impacts that could result from the implementation of their projects. On the home page, you will find main site navigation links across the top, important links in the left-hand sidebar, and news updates related to the GH Environmental Management System. The top navigation links focus on the process and procedural aspects of GH Environmental Management. For example, they link to information on roles and responsibilities, the steps of the IEE process, solicitation and award requirements, and required documentation. The Roles and Responsibilities page describes the various roles involved throughout the project lifecycle, including agreement officers' representatives or contracting officers' representatives, activity managers, and implementing partners. Each of these roles is described on this page along with a summary of responsibilities and applicable citations. Clicking on the top button will return you to the top of the page. Next, let's take a look at the IEE process page. Here you will find links to the four primary stages of the IEE process. Project planning, environmental screening, threshold decision, and approval process. Each of these steps is described on its respective page, including links to relevant resources such as the GH Project Design and Approval PAD guidance. You can navigate to the other pages using the Previous and Next buttons at the bottom of the page. The Threshold Decision page contains guidance and links to further information on each of the four threshold decisions, Categorical Exclusion, Negative Determination, Positive Determination, and Exemption. Please note that GH does not grant deferrals for projects during the IEE process. The required documentation for each of these threshold decisions is discussed on the documentation page. The documentation page helps GH staff navigate their environmental document development, approval, and retention requirements. Here, you can find information on which type of document you need to prepare depending on your project's threshold decision, which documents you must maintain, and how to upload your documents to the Environmental Compliance Database, or the ECD. The ECD is a searchable database of USAID's Reg 216 documentation. Environmental requirements are not limited to just Reg 216 documents, though. They must also be incorporated into solicitations and awards. This page contains resources to help AORs and CORs meet this requirement. The primary resources to assist with incorporating environmental requirements into solicitations and awards are ADS 300, 
the ADS 204 supplement and the applicable IEE document. Environmental requirements also need to be incorporated into the monitoring and oversight process to ensure overall environmental compliance of projects and activities. The management portal provides guidance on this step as well. The primary documents related to GH monitoring and oversight are contained in the EMMT, the Environmental Mitigation and Monitoring Template. The EMMT consists of three parts, the ESF, EMMP, and EMMR, or the Environmental Screening Form, the Environmental Mitigation and Monitoring Plan, and the Environmental Mitigation and Monitoring Report. The Environmental Screening Form allows AORs and CORs to annually screen and document the scope of project activities to ensure no changes have occurred. In some cases, changes in scope may require amendments or new documentation. For example, a categorical exclusion may expand and become a negative determination, requiring the preparation of an IEE document. This form is used whether a project receives a categorical exclusion, negative determination, or positive determination. Projects receiving a negative or positive determination will also be required to develop an EMMP. The EMMP is developed by the implementing partner and describes the mitigation measures and monitoring activities planned in order to minimize or eliminate the negative impacts of project activities. Finally, implementing partners on projects with EMMPs are required to submit an EMMR. This is an annual report that documents monitoring activities and the effectiveness of mitigation measures in the EMMP. The remaining top-level navigation links lead to information on climate change and the GH Environmental Management Workgroup. Let's move over to the left-hand sidebar, which contains primarily technical resources to help GH staff conduct their environmental analyses. The sidebar consists of three sections, GH training resources, tools, and technical guidance. GH training resources are added here as they are developed. These include videos such as this one, as well as links to online trainings and presentations. For example, there is the GHPOD Environmental Management Process Training, which is required for AORs, CORs, and Activity Managers. You can also access a case study that illustrates the application of the IEE process to a hypothetical global health focused project. The toolbox contains GH-specific tools to assist with environmental management and compliance. The GH Templates Repository is where you can find the most up-to-date GH Reg 216 templates, such as the IEE template and the EMMT. Here you can also find the GH Climate Risk Management or CRM template. Simply click on View or Download under the relevant template in order to access it. Next in the toolbox, we have the GH Environmental Screening Tool, which is a unique resource developed specifically for GH. The screening tool provides detailed guidance on the environmental impacts associated with typical GH activities and GH recommended mitigation measures that should be incorporated into project requirements. Information in the tool is grouped by eight primary activity categories. Education, technical assistance and training, research and development, public health commodities, small-scale construction or rehabilitation, small-scale water and sanitation, nutrition, vector control, and emergency response. These categories encompass the full GH portfolio of activities. You will also see these categories used in the GH templates, making this tool easy to use as a side-by-side -side reference for filling out your Reg 216 documentation. 
In some cases, project activities may fall under multiple activity categories. For example, the training of local healthcare workers on the proper administration of a vaccine would involve activities falling under the education, technical assistance, and training category, as well as the public health commodities category. In such cases, you should take a look at the guidance provided for both activity categories. On an activity categories page, you will find some introductory information on the topic, as well as detailed information related to the potential impacts of GH activities. For activity categories that often result in categorical exclusions, you will find information tailored to preparing a CE document as you can see here for the education, technical assistance, and training category. However, the screening tool is primarily focused on negative determinations and the preparation of IEE documents and their EMMPs. This page is an example of a screening tool section tailored for developing an IEE document and its EMMP. It contains information on the types of GH projects and activities that typically fall under this activity category. Below this introductory information, you will find icons describing the full project lifecycle for a GH mechanism involving this activity category. Here, for example, we have procurement, storage, distribution, and disposal of public health commodities. You can either click on the relevant section or you can simply scroll down to review all the information provided. Subactivities are listed along with their potential environmental impacts and GH recommended measures and monitoring activities. Note that the rows here correspond to the columns of the EMMP. Other tools in the toolbox are links to important documents like the GH IEE BOP. You will also see a link to Submit Documents for GH BEO Review, which links to the GH Environmental Compliance Document Submission Portal. This is only available for USAID staff. The final link in the toolbox will take you to guidance on uploading documents to the ECD. The remaining section of the left sidebar is the technical guidance section. It contains information on specialized topics related to GH projects and activities. These topics include partnerships, pesticides, and waste management. And each section contains guidance and resources to help AORs, CORs, and activity managers tackle the unique challenges associated with them. Many GH activities generate waste, and often this can be special types of waste such as healthcare waste. To help minimize the impact of GH projects, the management portal provides GH-specific guidance, as well as links to relevant resources such as World Health Organization handbooks. This completes our orientation of the GH Environmental Management Portal. For further assistance, please contact GH Compliance Support at usaid.gov.